Today we're going to do the handover video on the Burson Ixio 586. We're going to start on the outside and then move on into the inside. Come into your passenger side, filling up. You fill up from this side and it's diesel which just goes into here. Opening up your passenger door, the bonnet release catches on the passenger side which is just here. Pull that just to release the bonnet. Whilst I'm here as well, you've got Remis cab blinds fitted into the cab of this vehicle. To operate these, all you've got to do is pinch the clip and pull. I typically find that it's a lot easier to operate these when leading from the bottom. You can then connect them onto the magnetic strip. Along with the two sides, you've got the ones at the front, which are just here, and they are on, again, a magnetic strip which connect together. Send that back and let it clip in. Next, underneath the bonnet, your bonnet release catches, uh, sorry, your bonnet latch is just under, uh, in line with your personal logo underneath here. Once you have the bonnet uh, open, the main thing that you need to know underneath here is if you're ever wanting to jump start the vehicle. If that is the case, your negative goes onto here and your positive goes onto here, this tab here. You've then got a black cap which flicks over this, which can lock into place. That's got a plus sign on, which indicates that it's positive. Uh, as I say, they're the main things that you need to know, but just to point out a couple more things, you've got your engine oil, which is there, along with your engine dipstick. You've then got your uh, brake disc fluid, engine coolant, power steering fluid, and then finally your washer fluid, which is just in there. Moving on from the bonnet, next you've got your storage in here, you've got your storage area along with your awning pole and your pole for the um, to operate your, your fuel bike rack and that's all concealed in there. You've then got an external socket which is, which is there, for this you're going to need an adapter, um, well, that connects into there. And then finally on this side you've also got your gas bottles. This is where these are placed, two 6kg bottles you'll get into here um, and then you just make sure you tie them down. The main thing with the gas is make sure that it's turned off at the bottle when travelling for safety. Finally before moving on just to show you you've got your awning which is on the side. With your awning uh, today it's not too bad so you could get away with it but if it is ever you know breezy um, or windy don't use the awning as you can imagine it's a huge sail um, on the side of the van so it could always break it. Uh, however, if it's a day like today with no breeze, you're more than welcome to, to use it. Perfect time. Moving along to the back, you've got your bike rack, which is here, and also your reversing camera. You'll also notice just below here is your fridge vent. Coming round to the side, you've got your cassette toilet, which is here. Once open, you can see the cassette, which is just here. Um, to remove this, all you've got to do is pull up on this little green tab here and simply slide out. When sliding this, before you do so, make sure that the blade on the toilet is closed. If it's not, you'll go to, to move this and it'll, it'll be stuck. Uh, make sure you don't force it. What you've done is you've probably le you've left the blade open. Go onto the van, close the blade. And I'll, go, I'll touch more on that when we're on the inside of the vehicle. Uh, once you've done that, to empty this, simply flick this out unscrew and then tip out. On the back of the cassette as well you have that green button which is just right at the back. That releases a vacuum so when you are um, removing the, the waste from the from the tank, uh, from the cassette rather, it goes out all in one steady flurry. So you're sorted with that. You've also got a, a handle here which you can uh, which you can extend so on the campsite you can take it and it's easier to move. Into here you can put your toilet sachets or your blue fluid which goes straight into there and when swilling this out make sure you shake it from side to side um, to, to give it a rinse. Moving on from the cassette you have your convenience locker. With your convenience locker, this is where everything is stored in regards to your drain down points. The nice thing with Burstner is they put it all in one place for you. Before moving on to that, just to touch on this, this is your Truma vent. You can see this. 
in regards to this this is um, in essence your heat uh, your chimney um, so don't hang anything on here because it does get very hot moving around to your convenience locker opening up you can see firstly you have your hookup point so this is where you hook up to mains if you're on a site simply connect uh, onto there and you'll notice this little notch in the seal the, we, the lead comes through here and then you can shut the door you'll notice you've got an, another notch in the seal there so it comes out <clears throat> next you'll notice you've got your fresh water tank your fresh water tank will take 120 litres as it's indicated here uh, in regards to filling this up all you've got to do is simply unscrew this plastic um, cap take this slide it on and then all you've got to do is put your hose pipe in and fill it up uh, it's this color so you can see where the water level is however you know it's full when it's coming all out once you've done that um, I mean you can actually if you wanted to uh, you, you can clean this uh, we don't recommend drinking out the wa fresh water tank however you can clean it uh, if you're doing that just unscrew this and then give it a wipe out up here drain down points your drain down point for your fresh water tank is done by this black knob here to drain down the system all you've got to do is turn the dial as I open that you'll notice that water is now flowing out of the bottom that's going to then empty that fresh water tank and dump all the water there now at the moment when I tighten that back up when I go to unscrew that you've got two settings with this so you can either screw it um, to to uh, before the lug. So when you're screwing this, you'll feel a lug. When you get to that lug, it will drain the whole system down to 20 liters, and it does that as a quick drain down. So for example, if you're moving on site and you're traveling, with, uh, you need to keep some water in the vehicle. Travel with 20 liters due to weight di distribution and payload. If you're wanting to drain the whole 120 liters, all you've got to do is keep. Uh, unscrewing this knob and go past the uh, the lug you'll feel it it'll uh, it'll ping uh, and that'll drain down the whole system that's your fresh water tank next you'll notice you have your frost protection valve and finally your boiler drain down which is there your frost protection valve drains down everything in the uh, in the boiler system uh, and, and this in essence is a fail safe so this will react to temperature and when it gets to a certain amount of temperature, it'll trip. Uh, when it trips, it'll do that. Blue tab comes out, black nib on the diamond comes up and you can see it'll then empty. You need to, do, you need to always do that when, uh, when moving off site and, and, um, and storing the vehicle. However, it will trip automatically if it does get below freezing. Now, to, uh, to, to operate this, to open it, do as I've done there. Turn the diamond. As you do that, the black nib, as I say, will pop up and this blue tab will pop, ping out. To close it, all you've got to do is turn the diamond and push this blue tab in, like so. And then that'll stop the water from flowing out. Now, one thing to mention with this is, if you've not used the vehicle in a, in a while or it's a colder climate, and you go to close this system you'll go to close it so you'll turn the diamond like that and you'll go to push in this blue tab here when pushing this blue tab in it'll keep pinging out the reason being is this reacts to temperature as i say so if you're using it in the cli colder climates it's not going to close what you then need to do is you need to go on in onto the inside of the vehicle turn the heater on and you'll notice that there's a valve here this uh, this this pipe this will blow hot air into this area heating this up so as I say you can use the the heating without water so don't worry about damaging it uh, heat this area up once it's at a nice uh, about 20 after 20 minutes or so it'll be at a good temperature and then you can pop that in and then fill up the boiler finally that yellow um, tab at the bottom is everything from the boiler beyond at the moment it's closed in the down position flick up and that opens it. And what we say with all your drain down points um, is leave them open when you're traveling. 
uh, because it's uh, it's only water and the vibration of the road will, uh, will make sure that it gets it all out the system. Finally, the final drain down point that you've got is your wastewater. Your wastewater is directly uh, below this area, which is indicated by this sticker here. Underneath you'll notice there's a pipe, a grey pipe, and you'll also notice there's this square rod. What you've got is this, like an L. All you've got to do is connect it onto here, like so, and simply turn, like so. And that'll empty the system, just like that. As I say, that's your wastewater, make sure that you do that. And that concludes all your drain down points. That concludes the outside of the vehicle. We're now gonna move on to the inside. Moving on to the inside. First of all, as you walk in, is your control panel. Your control panel is uh, uh, consisted of various elements um, to operate the inside of the vehicle. If you click your master switch, which is this one, Turn that off. If I click your master switch, that activates everything. You'll notice I've clicked that on, some of your lights have turned on and things like that. Once you've turned this on, you can then, as I say, activate your lights and things like that and everything in the vehicle. Once that's on, you can also check your vehicle battery. Your vehicle battery is down here. You know that because it's a battery in the front of a van. Click that and it'll show your level. Up at the top, directly above, you've got your leisure battery. You know that because that is the um, a battery in the back of a vehicle. Click that and it shows your level. I'm not currently plugged into anything at the moment. Next along is your water. Your water levels, you've got your fresh water here and your waste water at the bottom there, which I've currently drained so it's not showing anything. Finally, you've got your pump. If I click that on, that'll activate the pump. When activating the pump, only use it when you've got water in the system. When using it and you're on site and you've filled up the, uh, the fresh water, click the pump on and go to each of your taps and your shower, turn it, to, uh, turn it on and turn it to hot. What that is going to do is it's going to pull water from the fresh, wa uh, wa uh, fresh water tank through the pipe system into the boiler, therefore priming the piping and also your boiler system and then out of the tap. That's going to spurt and splutter, and then once it's running steadily, you prime your system. Once you've done that, flick it over to cooled, and do the same. And this goes for all your uh, your shower points and your your um, uh, taps in the vehicle. Uh, once you've done that, you've primed your system. It's running steadily. Uh, you can then leave your pump on because on located on each of your taps are isolation. Um, uh, switches which will only activate the pump when you turn on the tap so it's like how you would have it at home and that is the control panel next coming around into the kitchen area before I move on to anything your windows your windows on the vehicle all come with fly screens and blackout blinds as you can see they do connect as well if you want to Disconnect, just push this up and disconnect them. On each of your windows, you've got these. Unhook and simply push out. Just like so. You can also have these on venting, as you can see, which will just allow a little bit of air to come through the van. However, when traveling, you obviously need to make sure that these are closed. So this is involved in one of your checks. So make sure that that's closed. Next, you've got your hob, which is in here. Hob is gas. You've got your igniter switch, which is there, and just feed it through. You've got blowout valves on each of them. Um, so make sure that you hold it in for a few seconds uh, once it's lit. You then got storage in here. You'll also notice, before I move on, isolation taps. These are isolation valves for specific areas in the vehicle. Never touch these. Um, don't turn them on. Don't play with them. Only uh, only turn them on uh, if you are advised to by uh, myself or a technician. Beneath that, 
you've got your grill, and then some more storage below, along with in there as well. Moving on, you've got your fridge. Your fridge is a three-way fridge. It's called a three-way fridge because there's three ways to power it. As you can see, you've got mains, gas, and 12 volts. So when you're going to be using it? When you're on site, you'll be using your mains uh, when you're hooked up. When you're wild camping, you're going to be using your gas, which is this one. And finally, when you're driving, you're going to be running it off the leisure battery, the 12 volt system. A lot of people think that they can uh, <clears throat> that they can run the fridge off the leisure battery when uh, wild camping. You simply can't. It won't let you. Because if that was the case, you're, uh, it would just drain your leisure battery. It requires too much power, the fridge. So that's your options. You'll also notice you've got this A at the bottom. If I click this, that's going to automatically assign whatever fuel you have power in the vehicle, uh, sorry, power in the fridge, uh, and it'll select it for you. So it's an automatic feature, that. Finally, you've also got your uh, temperature. Click that towards the temp. And then you've also got your uh, reset button. For whatever reason, if you get an error code and you need to reset in, click this. Your fridge, you have freezer and fridge below. That concludes your fridge. Before moving on to heating system, you've got more storage up at the top, which is just there. Next, your Truma heating system. So your Truma heating system, um, uh, and your heating system for the vehicle and the vehicle's uh, water temperature is all done on here. If I hold this, it'll turn on. Underneath the line is what you want to select. Using this dial, if I turn this, when flashing, this in essence is what you want to select. So this is what you're like hovering over it. Simply turn the dial to the one that you want and simply select. The first one is the vehicle's temperature. You can rotate this all the way around and flick this all the way up to 30 degrees. Uh, as I say, once you're happy with it, click the, uh, the button in. Next along is your water temperature. If I flick through the options, you've got eco, hot or boost. Eco is around 40 degrees, hot is around 70 degrees, and boost is a combination of, uh, of uh, where the, sorry, this is where the, the boiler will focus on heating the water. Your eco, you're going to be using that when you're having a shower, and your hot, uh, you're going to be using that when you're washing the pots and pans. And as I say, your boost, what that will do is it'll concentrate on heating your water and stop heating the vehicle itself. If I just go back, you've also got your fuel. Your fuel's really important because this is what, you, what you're going to use to fuel your heating. So you've got gas, mix one, which is a mixture of gas and electric. Mix 2, which is a mixture of uh, gas and 2 kilowatt electric. EL1 is 1 kilowatt electric, and EL2 is 2 kilowatt electric. Gas, you're going to use that when you're wild camping. Mix 1 and mix 2 is where you want to get it up to temperature really quickly. Um, and and it will, as I say, we'll use a, a mixture of gas and electric, typically when you're on a site. And then finally, your EL1 and EL2 is where you'll will be on site and you'll use that. Depending on the power that the, uh, the uh, campsite provides you, the majority of the time you'll have it on EL2. Finally, you've got your fan. With the fan, you've got a couple of options. You've got, again, eco, hot, or boost. Your eco is the uh, is almost like a, is a light fan. Your, um, your, your boost, uh, your, sorry, your hot is more of an intensified fan. Um, and then finally, as I say, your boost is the exact same as the water. It uh, just works vice versa, so it'll stop heating your water and focus more on heating the actual vehicle itself. At the moment, I've not got anything on, so you can have it on venting, so it'll vent the air. Scrolling through the options at the bottom, you'll notice you've got a timer, so you can set a timer for when you want it to, uh, to start. You've got your clock. And then finally, you've got your settings. The main thing that you need to know in the settings is the reset button. If you flick through the entire um, uh, system, you'll get to this reset button. Click that, 
and click it twice to reset the system. When resetting it, the reason that you need to do this is, for example, the most often uh, reason is you've selected a fuel that you've not got. So you'll get an error code which is down here which will start flashing. Um, what will happen with that is you've probably selected a fuel that you've not got. So you've tried to heat the vehicle or heat the water with some gas. However, you've not got any gas to the vehicle. In that case, obviously, it's got nothing to fuel it and it'll start flashing up. When doing that, you need to go, you'll get the error code, you need to go into that reset uh, uh, in the settings, click it and reset the system and then select a fuel that you have got. And that is all on that system. To turn it off, simply hold and it'll turn off. And that is your Truma system. Next up, you have your bathroom area. We've talked about the shower and priming the system for that. The main thing that you need to know in here is the toilet. For the toilet when using this, as I was saying outside, you have a blade. The blade is for, what you need to do is when in use, you need to open the blade. At the moment it's closed, pull down, that'll open the cassette up. When using it, open the blade so all the waste drops into the cassette. Then you need to flush, which you do so by here. Click this blue button, that'll flush the system. And then simply close the blade to stop odours from escaping. You'll also notice on here a gauge. This will tell you when the cassette's nearly full. Once at the top, you need to empty. As I say, this blue button is your flush. Uh, it's worth mentioning that this will only work when your pump is on. And that is your cassette. Next, coming out of your bathroom and going into your wardrobe area, you'll notice you've got your wardrobe here. You've got your TV aerial. To operate this, simply unscrew, push the pole up, and then tighten this to fix it in place. You've then got this little um, arm where you can tilt the head of the, uh, the aerial to increase signal. You've also got here, to, to turn the aerial on, click this button here. You'll then notice a little light will come on to show that it's on. And then you've got a dial at the top just to play around with the range. Obviously make sure that that aerial is down when travelling. Located in here is also your jack system, which is there. A lot of people take this out and wrap it up in some bubble wrap just to save, uh, just to save a little bit of space. Um, so that is concealed there. And then finally, you have your RCD breaker, which is just here. Your RCD breaker is when the van trips, you need to come to this area here. Moving on from your wardrobe, underneath there you've got some more storage. And then we're on to your lounge area. Your lounge, thanks to your drop down bed, is extremely spacious. Um, you've got your travelling seats which are located here. And a point for a telly which is just into there. To turn this lower area into a bed, because you have two options. All you need to do is drop this table into place. And then slide the cushions on top to make the base of the bed, which I'll do for you now. Once the table is dropped, you can then turn this area into the bed. If you are just using the drop down bed uh, and it's just two of you using the vehicle, what you need to do is drop this all the way down. To do that, as I say, you need to drop that table and then you need to remove these cushions. So move the backrests here and here, make sure that the area is clear and then you can drop the bed. Once doing that, you made sure that the area is clear. As I say, you can drop the bed. To drop the bed, you put your control panel, which is just on the side here, just as you walk in. To operate this, you need to turn the key and then press the button here. To press this, and then you can drop the bed. Just like so. What we say with your uh, drop down bed is you can keep all your bedding on just with your pillows, stick them at the top and you're good to go. You'll also notice that you've got your ladder for if you want this halfway and you want to sleep people underneath as well to make a double bunk. Once finished with the, bit, uh, the bed, just do the exact same and press up and that'll send the bed up. Once you put the bed up and you put the backrest back, you're good to go. 
just coming down you'll also notice you've got a socket here and also your trim of it, sorry your vents there you've got them throughout the vehicle moving through to the cab with these captain chairs you can swivel these to swivel these all you've simply got to do is pull this lever here you can then turn the seat around I typically find that it's a lot easier to turn these once you're off the vehicle uh, once you're off the seat you then have the cab here above the cab you'll notice that you've got your skylight which is just here again make sure that this is closed when traveling and this works the exact same as I showed you with the uh, with the window in the kitchen you've got your blind fly screen and also the points to open it so that concludes the handover video on the Ixio Time IT586. I hope you enjoyed.